Y'all hear about the little boy that went to church for the first time and um, after the service was over with, they were on their way home and his parents said, uh, well, Tommy, what do you think about church today? And he said, well, the music was pretty good, but that commercial was too long. <laughs> Well, I hope the commercial is not too long today. <laughs> when our kids were little, that was back in the 90s. Uh, I know I'm old. And, uh, but uh, they didn't have any concept of time. You know, we could say we're going to leave in 30 minutes, and they didn't know what that meant. And so one of the ways that we explained that, at that time, uh, you know, there was a big purple dinosaur named what? Barney. Barney. He was real popular and so we told him, okay, we're going to be leaving after one Barney show. <laughs> you know, and so that was the way we explained time. And so uh, hopefully today I'm going to talk about one Barney show and then, then we're going to let you go. So, uh, <laughs> you know, today we live in an age where there's Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and we have followers and we follow so many people and we have all these friends uh, on these uh, social media but you know what we're finding is, is that very few people have any real relationships if they do it's, it's very few uh, someone said that America has become a nation of strangers. Uh, today we live in a time when no one knows the next door neighbor. And that's just the way life is in 2019. Studies show that four out of ten people experience feelings of intense loneliness. That's the highest number ever. That's 40% of people feel intensely lonely. Uh, today, Americans uh, more closely identify with characters on the TV than they do their neighbors or uh, other, other people. I read a story about a sweet little lady who went to the store, went to the post office every week, and every week she would go in and and she'd go to the counter and she'd buy two stamps. And the same man waited on her after, uh, every week. And after a, several weeks, he said, You know, ma'am, you can buy a whole book of stamps out there from that machine uh, all the time. You won't have to wait in line each time. And she said, Yes, but the machine doesn't ask me about my arthritis. You know, people need relationships. It really matters. People long for connection. People long to belong. To have that relationship where they feel like they belong. And uh, so God created us with a purpose. And that purpose is to belong. I'm going to read you some scripture here. This is our best scripture for the day. We'll look at uh, actually several scriptures today. Uh, today I want to talk to you about what it means to belong. Consequently, he says, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but you are fellow citizens with God's people and also members of His household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. In Him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord. And in Him you too are alone, are, are being built together to, to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. And so the Bible teaches us that uh, we were designed, we were created to belong and to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Do you ever wonder what's going to happen when you die? <clears throat> Will anybody even miss you? Will anybody even notice that you're gone? Or 
or the sub, uh, substance and whole of your existence be a monument, a rock, with your name and your birth date, birth year, and death date. <coughs> People long to be a part of something. God created us, the Bible teaches, uh, for community. He fashioned us for fellowship, to have a connection, and formed us for a family. We've already talked this morning some about the family of God. And the Bible uh, does not say anything about solitary saints or spiritual hermits uh, the, who are isolated from other believers and deprived of fellowship. In fact, it's just the opposite. None of us can fulfill God's purpose by ourselves. He says, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people. Do you know that's God's purpose for your life? God wants you to be a part of His family. He wants you to be among the people of God. The New Testament teaches us that we are placed together. That we're joined together. That we're built together. That we're members together. That we're heirs together. That we're fitted together. And that we're held together. And one day we're going to be caught up together. You know, we're to be together. And yet, a lot of people leave church on Sunday, the ones who attend, and they never have any interaction with anybody else from that church until the next Sunday when they arrive. Do you know that's, that's not membership the way God defined it? That's not fellowship the way God defined it. And that is not the purpose of God. God designed us to be in fellowship, in relationship with one another. Now I'm in a relationship with uh, Tammy back there. And you know what? I talk to her every day. I talk to her several times a day, some days. And uh, we enjoy being together. We wake up together. We go to bed together. Not always at the same time. I stayed up and watched the Bulldogs last night. <laughs> Kept me away. Well, uh, we are supposed to be in relationship with one another. You see, our relationship with Christ, some people will say, that's personal. But can I tell you, God never intended for it to be private. It is personal to you. But God never intended for it to be private. Look at uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 5. The Apostle Paul says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, all our different little parts, and these members do not have all the same function. With my mouth I speak, with my ears I hear. And so on. So in Christ, we, though we're many, form one Say the word. Body. One body. And each member, look at that next word. What is it? Belongs to all the others. Did you know that you belong to the uh, other members of God's family? And they belong to you. You know, a church that is at odds with one another, and thank God. We haven't ever had that here. But a church that is at odds with one another is not operating according to God's purpose. Because we are members together and we belong together. To Paul, being a member of the church meant being a vital organ of the living body. An indispensable part of the body of Christ. And so we're members of another. You know, none of us can get by without our liver. <coughs> they might take out our 
consuls, they might take out our adenoids or whatever that is, they may take out our appendix, but they can't take out our liver. They can't take out both of our lungs because those parts are vital. And you, I want you to know, God teaches that you and I are vital to the body of Christ. And God wants you to be a part of that. In a lot of churches today, church membership is often used <laughs> to simply add a name to a role with no requirements or expectations. Friend, I want you to know that's not how God designed it. Probably a lot of you here, you're either members here or members someplace out of another church. But when you're not a part of wherever your church membership is, that is not God's will for you. In reality, our membership in His family calls us to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. This is our uh, simple mission statement here. Love God with everything. Love others as ourselves. And live to serve for God's glory. And that's why you hear us talking about sign up for this and sign up for that. Because we can't all do the same thing, but we can all do something. Amen? <laughs> Live to serve. And I'm super excited by our Live to Serve Saturday when we will go out into the community and we'll do uh, projects for those people who may not even know we exist here. Super excited about that. November 9th. That's what that board's back there for. I hope you'll sign up before you leave today. This, the church is so significant that Jesus died on the cross for him. That's how vital the church is. <laughs> he gave himself that we might be a part of his body. Well, let me quickly give you how did I start? I don't know how far along I'm in the morning show. <laughs> Uh, I, want, I want to give you some reasons you need to be a part of the church family. First of all, a church family identifies you as a genuine believer. Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. It identifies you. It's a birthmark. That everyone can see is your love for one another. Now, I, I don't want to belabor this point, but there's a lot of church members here, there, and everywhere that don't show this birth. We give you number two. Church family identifies us as a genuine believer. But secondly, a church family moves us out of self-centered isolation. Remember I said God didn't design us to be solitary and isolated. 1 Corinthians 12, 26, Paul speaking. He says, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. So when one brother hurts, we all hurt. And when one sister uh, rejoices, everyone rejoices. First John, a lot of people know John 3.16, but look at 1 John, 1 John 3.16. This is one of the letters that John wrote. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us and 
we are to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. That means that our brothers and sisters should be first. Our church family should come first in our list of priorities in life. So, a church family identifies us. A church family helps us uh, to move out of self-centered isolation. A church family helps us develop spiritual muscle. Makes us healthy and strong. I love Ephesians 4, 6, 16. It says, from Him, that's Christ, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligaments. Who are the supporting ligaments? We are. The ones that, that hold things together. Every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in what? As each part does its work. Each part. That means no one is insignificant. And a lot of people think they're insignificant in church. They, they come to church and they think, well, they won't miss me if I'm not there. They won't miss my little offering. They won't miss my little voice when I sing. <clears throat> they won't even know I'm not there. That is not true. Because you have work to do. See, God wants us not only to love Him and love others, but He wants us to serve. As each part does its work, gives us muscle. Individually. It makes the body stronger, but it makes us stronger individually. You see, maturity doesn't happen just by attending church. It happens by participating in a local church. That's what builds the muscle. Did you know that over 50 times in the New Testament, there's this phrase called one another or each other? Did you? Over 50 times. Listen to some of these. We are commanded to love each other, pray for each other, encourage each other, admonish. That means to, to encourage each other. Warning, a, a warning and encourages. Admonish each other. Greet each other. Serve each other. Teach each other. Accept each other. Honor each other. Bear each other's burdens. Forgive each other. Submit to each other. Be devoted to each other. And on it goes. You see, the Bible is very concerned and God is very concerned about how we relate to our church. And so it just, it, it plays right into this idea about back to church Sunday. Because if you talk to the average person in Dalton, Georgia, Woodfield County, Murray County, Morton County, in this area where we live, most have been to church. Many have made decisions for Christ and joined the church or been baptized. And friend, I want you to know it's time that all of us got back to church. Amen. And all of us began to love God with everything and love others as ourselves. It didn't say if they look right. It didn't say if they act right. And live to serve. It's time. Well, I got a couple more. A church family helps us develop muscle. Third, the body of Christ needs you. You know what I've found many times? If 
if I walk up to somebody who's not actively involved, they come to church, but then they leave, and if I walk up and I say, you know, I don't really need your help, you know what they'll say? What you need? And when I tell them, they say, I don't know why I'm doing that, but maybe I could do this. Say, pray. Some people were just waiting to be asked. Listen to what I'm going to say. Don't wait to be asked. God's already compelled you to do it. Christ has already given you commission to do it. Look at what He says in 1 Corinthians 12, 18. He says, But now God has placed the parts, that's us, each one of them in the body just as He wanted. You know, you're where you're supposed to be. And if you're not where you're supposed to be, then you need to get where you're supposed to be. I'm not offended when people leave this church and go join another church. I miss them. But if they've got a gift and a talent that fits someplace else and they feel God correcting, But the worst thing is say, you know, I, I don't know, I just, I don't know. And then they leave and they never plug in and serve. And God places us in the body. Where is He placed you? And then He says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, He says, a manifestation of the Spirit, that is the expression of God's Spirit, is given to each person to produce what is beneficial. God has given you that. God's given you an expression of His Spirit so that you can have a part. The body of Christ needs you. And then quickly, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works which God prepared in when? Advance for us to do. You've already got an assignment. You just need to figure out what it is and do it. You say, well, how can I figure out what I'm supposed to do? Try this. You'll know if it's for you or not. If it's not, try this. If it's not that, try this. There's plenty of animals to serve. The body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So the body of Christ needs you. Next. <laughs> you will share in Christ's mission in the world. You'll be a part of what Jesus designed us to be a part of. Acts 1 8, he says, I just sort of pulled out the particular parts. He says, You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. I know there's more to the verse than that, but that's the gist of how it applies to us today. You'll be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Jesus gave us the great commission. And we treat it like the great omission. And he said, go therefore to all the world and preach the gospel. Just reach them. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I command. That's Matthew 28, 19. You have been part of Jesus' mission in the world. You say, well, how can we be a part of that right here? Well, every time you share your witness, what we're supposed to be doing. Literally, the Great Commission literally says it as you go into the whole world. That's the literal rendering. As you go. So as you go from here today, reach people. As you go from here today, reach them and baptize them. As you go from here today, reach them, baptize them, and teach them. You say, I can't do all that. Can you invite them to church? Get them in the gospel uh, uh, place where they can hear the gospel 
and they begin to, to learn. They can be baptized, they can trust Christ. We need to be like that old Peanuts cartoon, a lot of you've seen it, where Lucy walked into the room and demanded that Linus, her brother, change the TV channel. And Linus says, what makes you think you would walk in here and take over? Lucy looks at him and says, these five fingers. <laughs> Individually, they're nothing. But when I curl them up together, into a single unit, they become a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I said, what channel do you want? <laughs> he turned away, he started to walk away, he looked at his hand, he said, why don't you guys get together like that? <laughs> Churches, churches has got a lot of stuff going on. And you say, why can't we get together like that? Because we got to get together. There's power. My final statement here. Final reason you are to be a part of God's family. A part of the body of Christ, the church. A church family will restore the fallen. Galatians 6 1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should do what? It doesn't say kick them when they're down. It doesn't, it doesn't say talk about them. It says restore that person gently. Watch yourselves. Because you can be tempted too. He goes on in verse 2 and says, Carry each other's burdens, and in this you will fulfill the law of Christ. What was the law of Christ? Love others. Love God. Love others as ourselves. He said, Let's restore one another. Do you know that when you were away from God, Jesus Christ came to restore? Your relationship with God. He gave us that example. <coughs> we were disconnected and cut off <coughs> from the lifeblood of the body. And when we're disconnected from the body of Christ, you know what's going to happen to you spiritually? You're going to wither. And all spiritual life will eventually cease to exist. You will make rationalizations. And you'll say all kinds of things. When you get really honest. You isolate yourself. You know that's one of the first symptoms of a spiritual decline is usually church attendance. And at other gatherings, <coughs> believers get together. When we become careless about fellowship, everything else begins to slide. If you agree with me, do you head like this? You know, Satan loves detached believers. He loves those who are isolated from God's family and unaccountable to spiritual leaders and the body of Christ because he knows they're defenseless and powerless against his tactics. The reality is, we've got to be together because we need each other. And it's only us who can restore those who are at a distance. As I close today, 
God created the church to meet our deepest needs. Let me say that another way. God created the church to meet your deepest need. Maybe you need to surrender your life to Christ today. 